My name's Alan Constantine. I've um, been on this planet 43 years. I have achieved many things. I have um, brought two brilliant young men into the world, married a wonderful woman. And this has brought to me to where I am today. I began back when I was 18. I met a lovely woman, a lovely girl called Margaret. And we fell in love straight away. As if we knew each other for years. Within a year we got married. Shortly after that, we had our very first son, Sean. And I had to grow up very quickly. I had to learn to be responsible and get a job, you know, the regular things a dad should do. So I took on many dead end jobs, stacking shelves, gardening, hell, even called bingo for a while. I was a security guard. All these jobs that never felt fulfilled and never felt as if it really represented me as a person. I wanted to be something more, something special, something more inspirational to others. And I always wanted to be a teacher. I spent a uh, spent a long time thinking about it and what it would mean for the family because I had to support the family as well as study. But by the age of twenty seven bad things happened. I got sick. Very sick. couldn't breathe properly. 27 years old, I couldn't run. I could barely walk far. Just choking, coughing up blood. Getting chest infections all the time. I was getting really, really sick. And then one day, I was cooking in the kitchen. Obviously, it's where you cook. I was doing chips in this chip pan on the on the cooker. The fat was hot. And my dearest Margaret, who was cleaning the top of the cupboard, and knocked this huge can of aerosol into the chip pan. And me being a dumbass went and tried to get it fishing out and it exploded. And I ended up in hospital with burns to the face, chest, from this hot fat. And from this one strange accident, this one strange accident actually saved my life. I had an x-ray done that day. And on the x-ray was this weird little shadow. That was the beginning of my my struggle with cancer. I had an operation at first to cut away a lobe of my left lung. It was bad, needed taken out. And I thought it was all over. And I could go back to living my life and chasing my dream to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a teacher. So I decided 
after I recovered to quit work and go back to college, which I did. And in four years, I achieved nine GCSEs, two eight levels. And my next step was to go on to university to study to become a teacher. This was an amazing time of my life. I had so much fun. Meeting new people, new friends. It was just, it was just fantastic. I was treated as an equal. Maybe not in the schools, but in the classroom. In university, I was treated as an equal, even though I was older. And things, things were great, things were working out fantastic. I was achieving so much, learning so much. I had this thirst for knowledge. I had this hunger to go out and, and inspire others to learn. And it was, it was just, everything was going great. It was a four year course and it was hard, it was difficult trying to do a degree while bringing, bringing up two kids while on very little money. It was very hard, very difficult to stay focused. To stay in focus was something that was, that became very, very difficult for me to do towards the end of the four years. Look back on it now and then. It just seems so, so, so long ago now. I started getting sick again. Didn't see the signs. Signs were there. I didn't see them. The doctor shut off. I was getting sick all the time. I was, again, chest infections all the time, every month. Just recover for recover from one, get another one, recover again, get another one. I'd struggle with breathing, couldn't breathe properly. And then I changed doctors when I moved house. And I was lucky. I changed doctors and he sent me for an x-ray. He wanted to know why I was so sick all the time. They found another suspicious mass in my left lung. And it, this, this was big bigger than the last one. I knew that, I knew straight away, right there and then, that it was cancer. I knew it. I knew there was, there was no doubt about it. So I had tests, really, really brutal tests. So I, I'm sat in the oncologist's office and he puts me on a regimen of chemotherapy for three months. It was a really hard three months. It made me very, very sick. It was also kind of cool, really. My, it turned my skin green. It looked like the, the Incredible Hulk. It's f I can laugh about it now, but it wasn't so funny back then. After the three months, went to see the same doctor. He said there's nothing more he could do for me. And he gave me, gave me a few years to live. Everything that I worked for in college and in uni meant nothing anymore. 
couldn't be a teacher. I couldn't follow my dream to inspire others. And then one day, Margaret remembered that there was one particular surgeon who told us prior to seeing the oncologist that once I had the chemotherapy done, I can go back and see him and he might be able to help. There was that little glimmer of hope, that little tiny glimmer of hope. And I held on to that so tight. I held on to it. And this one surgeon said, it's unconventional. We don't usually do it, but because of my age and because I'm usually, I'm otherwise strong and healthy, I could go through the operation. So one day I went to hospital, they cut away my left lung completely and lymphoid glands just above. It spread some of the lymphoid glands. And the day after that, I got a visit off him. And he said, congratulations, Alan, you, you are now free of cancer. Oh, I got the relief. The relief just was just incredible. I cried for hours with relief. And <laughs> just, it was fantastic. And I had a glorious couple of years where I was cancer free. No worries, no worries at all. And then, um, then it happened again. I got sick again. And in the summer of well, three years ago, about four, yeah, four years ago now, I was diagnosed with cancer again. It's a small cell lung cancer. This time I've got it in different places now. I've got it in my right lung, my left diaphragm. I think we've even got one on my, on my right kidney now. Been on chemotherapy now for almost four years. Every day for four years. It's been hard. It's been really, really hard. Some days I can't even get out of bed. Sometimes I look back on my life, reflect on the things that I've done, things that I've missed out on, things I could be doing now. And it, it still hurts from time to time. I'm not bitter about it. I'm glad I had them experiences. I'm glad. I had the, the opportunity to go to uni and meet these new people and had the experience of teaching a class. That was brilliant. But um, now I'm disabled. I am um, can't walk far. can't breathe properly. Um, the only thing I've got left now is my heart. It keeps me happy. Something I love doing. I love doing any, any any kind of art except abstract. Abstract is not art. Modern art is awful. Real art comes from the soul. It comes from things that inspire you and push you forward to challenge yourself and make, make, make you seek to 
be better. I think I made my family proud with it. That's my life in a nutshell. And I hope this helps. <laughs>